Hello, everybody. I'm looking at the microphone. I should be looking at you. Uh, the little video. Uh, first off, I um, don't know how well this uh, shows on uh, camera, but I've got a very red face today. Uh, I've got sunburn. Um, quite, uh, quite impressive sunburn. Um, so I went to um, uh, the Rebellion Punk Festival in Blackpool uh, yesterday, something I, I never thought I would attend. Um, I was very, very lucky to be on the guest list of one of the artists who was performing there. Amazing. Um, and so I went along. Uh, and um, there was an outdoor stage and there were lots of indoor stages. So the first band on the outdoor stage was a band called Pete Bentham and the Dinner Ladies, who I kind of always wanted to see. Um, a band from uh, Widnes, I think, maybe Liverpool. Um, anyway, so, so it's like, right, well, I'll start the day at the outdoor stage. Uh, and then I thought, and I'll stick around and I'll watch... The um, what are they called primitives who did smash crash even, um, and then I thought I was assuming I was planning on maybe sticking around watching the wedding present and then going to the indoor stages to uh, uh, mooch around there and then watch my friend Helen a cookery book. Um, uh, as it turned out, I mean, so I checked the weather forecast. I was driving from Bolton. The weather in Bolton was like very very rare. Check the weather forecast for Blackpool. Said basically the same thing. Um, so I'm like, well, I'll just put my take my denim jacket, double denimed, uh, and got there. It was like glorious, outrageous sunshine, um, with not a cloud in the sky. Uh, so. I watched two bands. I watched Pete Band from Din Ladies and then I watched Primitives. And then uh, I had to retreat indoors. Uh, I had no, because the weather forecast was bad or very, very average, or just or very grey, should I say. Uh, no sun protection at all, hence the red face. I'm not sure how it's going to show on the camera. Hopefully, it doesn't look too bad. Uh, but yeah, just, um, oh dear. Yeah. So I had a lot of color in that face. Still have, haven't I? Uh, so this reminded me of what I'm painting today, what I wanted to paint the minute I saw it and I can't share it. I should have shared it with set this up so I could share the image, but it's a still from a film called Recorder, the Marion Stokes project. Uh, I saw it um, this week, and the minute I saw this image, uh, I must paint that. And it's an image of Marion Stokes' husband, John Stokes, and it's taken from a recording of a TV show in the early 70s, I think this one is. Uh, and the colour, the colour just made me go. Mm -hmm. I have to paint it, I have to paint it. And it's basically deep Prussian blue and lots of yellow ochre. And I just wanted to, it kind of almost an abstract thing. And I really had to paint it, so I'm painting it. Um, now you'll see here, this is not Prussian blue at all. This is a cobalt turquoise blue. I'm using this as a base. Prussian blue is going to go over the top of it. Um, it's an experiment. I don't know how it's going to look, but we'll find out. But yeah, I just had to do it. Such rich colours. Um, thought it'd be really good, good thing to do. Um, possibly more interesting for me than for you, but we'll see. Um, so what's this film about? You're all asking me. Recorder, the Marion Stokes project. Well, Marion Stokes was um, a political activist, I would say, in uh, Philadelphia uh, throughout the 60s, 
and 70s. Um, uh, and she was a she was a black woman, which is partly relevant to the story. There's certainly a, uh, an element of what she did, uh, which was very valuable, I think, to the black community. Um, but she basically, it's a story of what happened when she, she got her first um, VCR, video cassette recorder, um, a Betamax, and how it, the impact it had on her life. She started recording things off TV. I think mostly news, rolling news and, well, local news, then ultimately rolling news with the advent of 24 hour news channels. And she, she never stops. She just kept going, recording this stuff. Uh, and she ultimately amassed a collection numbering around 70,000 videotapes. Yep, 70,000. Um, and when she died, she left all this. And fortunately, it has been saved and is part of the collection now of the uh, Internet Archive. Um, all this historical stuff, all saved for posterity, for reference, for research. Um, a lot of it's so important. And that's why I say specifically, or particularly to the black community, it's a very good mention that you, within that collection, the new, you can follow news reports and see how black people were treated in America, particularly uh, throughout the 20th century, uh, and not treated very well uh, by the powers that be. Um, so it's a very important collection, I think, and she was very interested in how the person who controls media controls the stories, don't they? Um, so really, really great documentary. Uh, I urge you to find it, watch it, it's fascinating. Um, I saw it on the BFI player. Uh, you can get a free trial to that if you think, well, I can't, can't afford to, to commit to a subscription. It's fair enough. A lot of us can't. Um, free trials are really good in that aspect. Just make sure when you get the free trial, cancel it straight away because you'll still get that time to watch it. And at the moment, I don't know if it's changed. As, I, as I'm painting this, um, they have an offer on where you can get a month's trial. So if you watch a lot of films, you can easily, you know, you can watch loads of stuff during your free trial. Highly recommend it. Some very good films on there. I've seen, I've only actually watched two so far, but I've watched Lawrence of Belgravia documentary twice. <laughs> And we've watched Ricarda. Both really, really enjoyed. Very, very good. So, so this is her husband. She went on to marry this man. I don't know if they were married at the time of this uh, TV show. Picture was taken. This is the wrong, using the wrong brush, I think. I think. Uh, John Stokes was a. An independently wealthy man. Uh, imagine that. Imagine that. Um, but he's very interested in philanthropic work and community mm. and stuff. Mm. You know, I don't want to talk too much about the details because you, you should really try and find it yourself and watch it. That's interesting. That line I just don't don't like it. Um, 
it's too precise. No, just obliterate it. The thing with watercolors, there are certain things that work as um, detail, but a lot of things need to be vague, I find, in order for them to to look right, to work. And if you start adding too much detail, you can you can kill it quite easily. Paint for the accidents and adding detail tends to kind of say these are deliberate. Yeah. So yeah, getting it more abstract. I may not fill this bit in. Maybe the tie. Who knows? We'll see. Like that. We're ready for the Prussian blue on top now. We've had um cobalt turquoise colour, we've had a phthalo, phthalo, phthalo blue. Phthalo, I think it is. Phthalo. Jesus walked in, he had phthalo on his head. And uh, <laughs> here comes the Prussian blue. Whoa. Rich. Deep. Need to really pile this colour on, don't. Don't let it go thin on the brush. You can see using these three blues gives it a lot of depth. You get bits of the other blue showing through. Nice, I like it. I'm going to try this combination more often. So rich. Punk festival then, Rebellion Punk Festival. No, I'm not a punk. Uh, and I don't particularly listen to much punk music. Um, it was a great time. It was really, really good. Um, the, the, the best thing about it um, was just the um, the sights, the, the people were great. The, punk outfits, old school punks, new punks, I saw a couple of uh, punks from, well they look like uh, Latinos, I don't I know we have them, um, there was a band from Chile playing, um, they may have been with that band, I think they live over here obviously, um, but they look so cool, really really cool, um, sharp punks, yeah, Harringtons and pinstripe trousers and just like really really cool um loved that look a lot and yeah it was just it was so good just people watching i would go again the only thing that would stop me is the, the cost um because the music i'm i'm less into um although i can always find something that i like um but the a day ticket is like 90 quid uh and so it's quite uh, an expense if you are not massively into a lot of the bands there. Um, but it was really good. It was really good. I had a great day. So you see this paint's running on his eyes, but I think I'm kind of hoping for that this time. I don't always. But I do kind of want this to be more um, abstract. It's all about the colours, I think, this one. They work so well together, these like orc colours, the earthy tones against the um, very rich blues. So 
here. I'm trying to get it, get some detail correct. Very strange eyes now. <laughs> it really has run, hasn't it? Let's do the tie. I think I feel that we need to do the tie to sort of um, tie it down, so to speak, and possibly the rest of his suits. So let's do that. Not difficult. Um, I found an interesting source of images as well. This is via this documentary um, that mentioned that Marion Stokes recordings had gone to the Internet Archive. And that site is a great source of images, especially for drawing faces. Um, because there are loads of um, news reports on it, um, even before they received um, the donation of the Stokes archive and there are so many great faces and they're all a lot of them are from VHS recordings so they're kind of fuzzy and colours tend to bleed into another so VHS recordings are kind of painterly anyway in a way that modern digital recordings aren't so the the great to work from. So that's a rough grey. There we go. That tie is massive now. It's not that big in real life. <laughs> Huge tie. It looks like a nineties footballer with that knot. It's like Gianluca Viali's nuts. Right. Now, see, I want more detail in the eyes. The eyes are still wet and I fear that if I put more detail in now you can see they're very wet just gonna run can't get the detail in um, so maybe do I pause it do a bit of a time lapse don't know do I just go for it I always just go for it, shouldn't you? Come on, do it. Let's go. Yeah, it's not running too much. That that makes a big difference already. Yes, that's good. Now you see, this is where the detail is, works. When everything else is kind of blocked in. Yeah, that's good.
See, I'm slightly more quiet on this drawing because it's uh, concentrating a bit. It's looking good. I like it. Do I add a bit of colour to those lips? I'm not sure. We've got this kind of reddish brown here. Let's try it. Yeah. And we go. And we can put a bit of that. No, we can't. Don't be silly. Don't use the same lip colour for the skin. There we are. When you're painting portraits, there's always a little line here and the indentations on the other temples. I always find they really help give some definition to the face. Don't forget them. Put them in. Right, I'm going to add some of this yellow. Oh, that is currently orange because I've added red to it in a previous painting. So let's paint that away. Right, some yellow. Nice, it's good. Okay, I'm going to leave it there because I think that's done. Um, yeah. I'm going to let that dry and scan it. And uh, I'm not, not quite done. I'll tell you what it needs. These is lapels starting out. No, oh, it's done. No, it's not. Okay. No, it is done. Yeah, so um might put this on my shop. Um if I do I'll stick a link below. Uh but basically people that's it, thanks for watching. Go and uh Paint how I've just seen it on the screen. Go and paint your own uh, freaky uh, yellow alien guy. Okay. <laughs> Bye.